All right. Can everyone hear me on YouTube? And see me as well, having a little bit of technical difficulties here. Okay, great. So it seems both myself and Mr. Davis, the teacher, is having second difficulties, but I think we have everything just about worked out. So we will start today's session in a couple minutes. All right. 
let's begin today's open up today's open discussion session with reciting a prayer for spiritual workers and then we'll open the floor for our q and a Prayer for spiritual workers. Almighty God, I bless all those who, because of their limitations, would smite me. Almighty God, I bless all those who, because of their weakness, would not heed me. Almighty God, I bless all those who, because of their ignorance, would defile you through me. And I ask, Almighty God, O wondrous power, that your strength may be given to me now, so that I might be fortified by this, so that I might go forward bravely into the world, and despite reception, send forth my love of thee, throughout all races of man. Almighty God, give me the power and strength to rise above my comic weakness, the deficiencies in the pattern of my evolution, so that I might evolve and become stronger, I, and even stronger, in thy everlasting light. O God, thy will be done. All right, welcome everyone to another open discussion and various topics, class number 128. As per usual, feel free to post any questions you have in the chat, questions or comments, and we will be glad to address those for you. Uh, in the second half of the open discussion, We'll continue our Q&A session, but we'll also continue our examination from last week of the four Shakti principles. And we'll also look at the realms of consciousness. So that'll come a little bit later. I do believe I put the for Shakti Principles handout in the shared Google Drive folder. So if you look in the description, if you're joining us on YouTube, you'll see a link there to our Google Drive folder. And it should be in 2023. Let me hop in there really quick to make sure I actually did it and not just think I did it. Last notes. Uh, I don't remember where I put it. Okay, so no, I actually did not do it. So let me do it right now. So if you jump into the Google Drive folder, you may have to wait a couple of seconds for it to refresh, but you should see the Shakti principles, the four Shakti principles handout that we looked at last time in that folder. It's a, a PDF file. But do we have any questions or comments to begin today's session? Come back to the chat. Okay, 
So as we review, this is what we looked at last time. We looked at the first principle, first Shakti principle, Vyana Shakti. I'll look at the second Shakti principle, Chitta Shakti. We discussed the third Shakti principle as well, Prana Shakti, as well as the fourth Shakti principle, Amanda Shakti. And we saw how they all tie together to create the principles of creation. So again, this handout is available for download. If you go to the, if you click on the link, uh, you should see a couple of folders for previous year's handouts. You can also download those as well. But in the 2023 folder, uh, the only file in there should be the one you're currently seeing, Shakti 4, Shakti Principles. As I mentioned last week, I did want to move into a brief discussion of looking at the realms of consciousness, which we'll get to in the second half. And if you remember as well, we also looked at the major powers within the chakras. So in a previous open discussion, we looked at the anatomy of the chakras and understanding the energies that flow through and into those vortex centers or the psychic centers or those planes of existence, those realms of existence. And in this handout, it just uh, depicted that same information, but breaking down the anatomy of the chakra, including its uh, the bindu, the petals, the buttas, the pranas, the loka or realms, uh, the tattvas, as well as the chakra kundalini, all wrapping, all that wrapping around the bindu and then the mantras and the granthi knots as part of that overall, that full anatomy of the psychic center or, we, or the chakra, what we call the psychic center. Uh, this handout is not up yet because I'm going to cover uh, the realms of consciousness today. And I do believe there's additional pages you want to add to this handout. So it is not yet complete. But once it is complete, I will post it into the shared folder and we can all take a look at it together. Okay. So that's for later on. Let's see if we have any questions or comments. And if you're not comfortable posting your questions on the chat, you do have the option of emailing your questions to us. Or if you're not able to join us live, you can email your questions to us as well. And based on your instructions, we'll either answer that question in a following open discussion or we'll answer it privately. So the first question here. Now, this question may be redundant, but why is it important to be aware of these levels of consciousness? Mm -hmm. 
because uh, everyone works on multiple levels of consciousness, whether you realize that or not. You uh, you work on you have a you have a basic consciousness. We have several levels to your basic consciousness, and then you have a, a subconscious mind. That subconscious mind uh, takes care of involuntary functions, and then you have a a super conscious mind that guides uh, the subconscious conscious unconscious mind then you have a conscious mind that that the soul used to manage uh, all the bodies or all the different as aspects of its expression you have at least four different major levels of consciousness. And each one has its own functions. So in order for you to, to uh, fine tune anything, you must know the mechanics of it and the nature of it. Just like any machine that you function or, or use as a tool. Your car, if you don't, if you don't have the knowledge to tune up your car, then you take it to someone who does have knowledge to tune up your car or to change the oil. So it's uh, it's an essential function in your personal development. Okay. So I hope that answered your question. Have any additional, any other questions? Great. So even though we'll go over a couple of handouts, the floor is always open throughout the entire session. So if any questions you have on any aspect of metaphysics and have to be specifically uh, tailored to uh, the topic of discussion, but any question you have, feel free to ask and We'll do our best to answer it for you. So I will continue the discussion on the chakra system because, well, the chakra system are the realms of consciousness. So um, I will pull from some handouts from previous open discussions to help us better understand um, what the realms of consciousness are and how they apply to us as individuals, as physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual beings. I don't want to cover too much information in one session because uh, we, we have plenty of time to cover this material, but the handouts that are available in the shared folder, I'll let you know, so you can go back and download them, review them, study them, uh, jot down any questions you may have, and you can come back and ask those questions, and we'll be happy to continue that discussion with you as we look at both the chakra system, the realms of consciousness, and other 
subject matter. All right, so as we wait for more questions to come in, let's hop into, let me get the right one queued up. There we go. Our survey of the chakra system. Now, depending on the subject matter that is being covered and the, I guess you can say the uh, level of knowledge, awareness of the audience uh, that Nehemiah is talking to or is addressing when he was designing the, uh, the handouts, you'll see um, both English and Sanskrit terminology for uh, these metaphysical concepts. Do not shy away from the, from the Sanskrit, although it can be difficult for us in the West to, to read or to understand um, the the terms that are being, or the concepts that are being expressed in Sanskrit, where translation is possible, uh, it is given, but try your best to stick as close to the, uh, uh, the Sanskrit terms as possible because vocabulary is important. Having the proper terminology, especially when studying this material is very important. So don't be afraid of the Sanskrit terminology, you can always go back to encyclopedias or dictionaries or even to come back to these handouts. And you will see uh, many a times, like for example, in this chart, uh, Nehemiah gives both the Sanskrit and the English names for both the chakras, uh, the Mahabindu regions, uh, the Vijayas and the realms and so forth. So that you will always see uh, either both or one or the other, but the, the, do not shy away from the Sanskrit. It'll help you to digest, and understand this information even better as you continue in your study and in your development. So let's start our conversation and our review of the realms of consciousness by diving a little deeper into the chakra system itself. The main components of the chakra system are a series of sound vibrations of different frequencies. These sound vibrations are said to originate from the soul in its efforts to involve parts of its consciousness in order to bring about a limited state of consciousness. The soul projects a perpetual sound vibration, the spoken word, that is set in motion as a series of modifications on the universal mind substance and cosmic energies which formulates the various vehicles that it works through on several realms of experience in order to gain its karmic experiences on the physical mental realms, the astral mental realms, and the etheric mental realms. So in those few sentences, a lot was covered. Um, you can go back to previous lessons where uh, Nehemiah looks at the formation of the universe in how the absolute, uh, that's what we refer to as God in its unmanifested state, uh, spoke a word, that initial spoken word is called the, the vak. And in that vak is 
I guess you could say, uh, can correct me if I'm wrong, Nehemiah, uh, what uh, physical science uh, uh, calls the Big Bang, um, in which uh, the framework of all of creation is released, as well as the energy in which animates all of creation. It's got a warning message. I just got a couple of warning messages over here. Can you guys hear and see everything okay? Yeah, I can hear you. I guess the feedback from the audience. Can, can you guys on YouTube, can you hear? The stream didn't just die. Okay, great. Uh, what was I saying? Okay, yeah, so the VAC. And in that VAC, uh, you have, when we're looking at the mystic constitution of man, which is the uh, the primary uh, teaching modality that the International Mystic Knowledge Center that we employ, we we look at the macro scale of universe and creation as a whole, but then we bring it to we bring it home onto the micro scale of to ourselves to the human being, and we look at the uh, uh, the creation of the soul as a vehicle of expression for the spirit, uh, the spirit, which is unmanifested, and the soul, which is partially unmanifested, that part is that is connected to spirit and is manifest, and the point or the part of it is manifested and is that manifested vehicle of expression for the spirit uh, that goes out and forms the auric bodies. And, and, and then the auric bodies, you have the uh, various vehicles of conscious expression uh, the etheric body, astral body, and in our case as well, the gross physical body. Now, in that uh, initial framework of creation, there are multiple realms uh, of existence uh, that, that are manifested. And it is through our chakras, through our psychic centers, that we connect to those realms of existence. So if you look at the chart, you will see, uh, for example, a uh, number six, the Christ center or the Ajna chakra, uh, you will see the corresponding realm in the far right-hand corner uh, that uh, aligns with that, uh, that chakra. And particularly for the, for the Ajna chakra, you have the Tapo Loka, or the perfected realm. So if you want uh, for much more detailed and better explanation, you can go back uh, in our uh, YouTube video library and a look at um, the discussions uh, where Nehemiah goes into great detail uh, and illustration of the creation of the universe, as well as uh, his text, The Ancient Language of the Soul, I believe it's in uh, chapters seven and eight, where he goes into great detail about the creation of the universe and how all of this works together in creating that ancient language or mantra, which is also available for purchase. This book, Ancient Language of the Soul, through either uh, Amazon or on our website, mysticknowledge.org, or you can look at a uh, video library, the study sessions, the first text that I actually that we use in the study sessions is the ancient language of the soul, where I read through the entire text, um, as well as have discussions with the author, Mr. Davis, our teacher, in answering additional questions of it. So you have plenty of information that you can go back and look on to help you understand the concepts that we're covering, which are covered uh, rather quickly uh, in this paragraph, maybe two or three sentences, but in those few sentences, there's a, a lot of information packed into it. This perpetuated sound motion 
then resonates from the soul, it represents the consciousness of the soul within the subtle and gross bodies that are built from the mind and pranic energies. The soul develops a series of vortex centers of concentrated sound frequencies, the chakras, that extend out and create a network of sound consciousness that acts as a body matrix of complex sound divisions, the nadi system. All right. So again, uh, he in these two paragraphs, sorry, in these two sentences, we talked about mind and pranic energies. If you remember, mind is the energy that molds and shapes prana into various formations or into various aspects of God, be it a pencil, uh, a lizard, a human being, a planet, or a solar system. And the pranic energies are those five pranas. There's minor pranas as well, but we'll stick to the major five major pranas. And those five major pranas, uh, both individually and collectively in various configurations, is the energies that builds and sustains. Well, the energies behind creation is, is another sustaining energy, which we'll get to at another time. And then we also, he also mentioned the a body matrix of complex sound divisions that is the Nadi system or the subtle nervous system as, as uh, uh, Dr. George King uh, uh, described it for help to help us better understand it. And if you, if you think of our physical uh, nervous system, including the brain and the, and the spine and the nerves, ganglia that extend outwards from that into all of the body, uh, the physical nervous system uh, that we know is a physical representation of the nonic system. They don't particularly map in that the physical nervous system and the nonic nervous system uh, are one-to-one -one matched throughout the bodies, but it is a, a similar idea, or the physical nonic system is the a representation of the subtle nervous system, which is called the nadis, and those nadis uh, inter- twine or go in and out intersect with the psychic centers and are propagated throughout the entire auric structure carrying that energy uh, throughout the ore and its auric bodies these vortex centers of concentrated sound frequencies and body matrix of sound has a magnetic pull and modification power over the universal mind substance and cosmic energies that it uses in order to express its consciousness through. This is the sabda body or sound body that stands behind all living things. That is the consciousness of all living things. Within this sabda body, there are the chakras, the bindus, the bijas, the chakra petals, the nadic system, and the kundalini. This is the core consciousness of any being here on our mother earth. So you can go back to last week and week prior in the open discussion where we talked about the anatomy of the chakras, the bindus, the bijas, and the petals. And in previous open discussions were and in lectures, it'd be actually probably better if you go back to the lectures. And um, where a um, detailed discussion on the nodding system is given, as well as Kundalini. You can also look at the both the text and the series of lectures uh, that Nemo has given on the text, uh, The Serpent Power by Sir Arthur Avalon. You can download the text on our website, ancient, not ancient, I'm sorry, not ancient, so uh, mysticknowledge.org. You can download it. It's a very advanced text, uh, but 
with heavy Sanskrit, but again, do not shy away from the Sanskrit. It'll take you maybe several passes through uh, and reading the entire book cover to cover uh, to begin to understand it. But in the uh, lecture series that uh, uh, DNMI gave on the Serpent of Power, uh, there's also additional handouts and uh, uh, literature uh, that DNMI produced to help us understand that text. And that text that gives us a, uh, is a wonderful treatise on the Kundalini, as well as um, many other of the ancient teachings around the uh, mystic constitution of man. So if we go back up to the, wait, did I finish that paragraph? I believe I did, yes. So if we go back up to the chart, we'll work our way down from the Sahara or the crown center, number seven at the top. It's seed mantra or bija is the AUM and is referred to as the thousand petaled lotus. Uh, let me see if it's in if it's in this. Yes, okay. So in 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 the next, uh, I was going to mention uh, something about uh, Shashumna uh, terminating at the Christ, but in the in the next um, page, we'll get to that. Next, we move at the Ajna or the Christ center. Its Mahabindu region is Rudra in Sanskrit or the Moon region. Its seed mantra is OM, has two petals. And you see here the, uh, the, the of those petals, the, uh, the, the, the syllables or sounds that are attributed to them. And its realm is a tapoloka or an English perfected realm. Next, we come to Vishuddha or the throat center. This is number five. And it also belongs to the Mahabindu region of Rudra or the moon. Its bijat is the HAM containing 16 petals and, the, and there are the vowels of, or, the, or the, uh, the letters corresponding to those petals, which are the vowels. And its realm is the Jana Loka or the casual. Next we have the Anahata uh, chakra or the heart center. Its Mahabindu region is the Vishnu or the sun. Actually, let me zoom in a bit. Oh, that's easy. That's better. And its seed mantra is YAM. It contains 12 petals. And there's other letters on those petals. And its realm is the Mahar Loka or the realm of the balance. Then we come to the Manipura or the solar plexus center. It too belongs to the Divishnu or the sun uh, Mahabindu region. Its Siddha Mancha is RAM containing 10 petals and its realm is the Swahloka or the subtle realm. This next we have the Svratistana or the sex center, number two. And its Mahabindu region is the Brahma or the earth region. Its seed of mantra is the AM containing six petals. And those are the corresponding letters to those petals. And its realm is the Burvar Lokar or the astral plane, astral realm. And we come to the Murahara, uh, the base of the spine is number one. It too also belongs to the earth or Brahma Mahabindu region. Its bija is LAM, containing four petals, and its realm is the buh loka, or the physical realm. As I mentioned earlier, we come to the Shashumna Nadic flow. So, as I mentioned earlier, you have the Nadi system, the subtle nervous system, which propagates throughout the entirety of the aura the orc body, but there are primary nadic flows as there are primary clusters of nerves, which in our spinal column and from the spinal column, the rest of the nervous system propagates outwards throughout the physical body. Uh, in the subtle nervous system, you have the 
primary nodic flow of Shashumna. And then from that Shashumna nodic flow, which connects to the psychic centers, you have the propagation of the other nadis uh, moving outwards, including uh, the two primary nodic uh, flows. Well, there's, there's, there's three, actually. I think we'll get to the others later on when we look at the um, Ida in Pingala. I, I don't know if I queued it into this collection of handouts. No, I didn't. All right, so next time I'll come back and we'll look at the uh, Ida and Pingala. I did not include it here. The Shashumna Nautic flow of energy carries a Shakti quality of the preservation of forces of all cosmic energies. The Shashuna Nautic line of force holds consciousness in manifestation on several planes, lokas, of existence and allows man to gain countless lifetimes of valuable experience. It is said that the Shashumna Nadi has three inner channels that seem to compress all the qualities of Shakti force of the Nadic and Chakra system into one minute channel that pushes upward and forward opening the major chakras and giving tremendous power over the cosmic energies and mind energies, placing man's conscious awareness on a supra-conscious level. The first layer of the nadic vibrations within the Shushumna nadi is called the Vajra nadi. Okay. Uh, if you look at the illustration on the left-hand side, uh, you can see an uh, illustration of the uh, Shashumna Nadi channel. And each of the dashed lines represent a layer of the, uh, of the Shashumna Nadi. So at first looking at the Vajra Nadi, and that is the, if you, count, if you count Shashumna as the outer layer, then next innermost layer would be the Vajra layer or the first layer of the Nadi vibration of the Shashumna is the Vajra Nadi. And we'll slowly work our way inwards towards the Brahma Nadi channel. The Vajra Nadi is a conduit inside the central channel that extends from the genitalia region to the head region. The Vajra is described as a hard diamond-like substance, hard but lustrous with the light and power of thunderbolts. It is said that this layer of Shushumna Nadis, the Vajra Nadi, is a place where the sexual energy, Ojas, connects with the brain. Ojas is the highest form of base, physical manifested energy in the human body, which is a concentrated form of semen. Uh, do not get uh, confused there uh, in that because uh, it's referred to here as a concentrated form of semen, uh, ojas is present in both, uh, in all bodies, male and, and female. See here is well. This is looking at uh, um, base of spine, the mudahara, where uh, kund the, the vast majority of uh, uh, kundalini resides in, in in dormancy, and the energy that is actually uh, pushed through the nodic system is the active part of kundalini and based off of one's spiritual development uh, greater and greater amounts of kundalini can be uh, moved through the nodic system allowing one to tap into uh, higher aspects of the senses so of the 10 senses, we have a physical, astral, and etheric equivalent to them. 
let's just we have physical site, there is an asterisk and etheric um, counterpart of sight, which is referred to as clairvoyance and, and so on. The second inner layer of the Shashumna Nadi is called Tritra Nadi. The configuration of this Tritra Nadic force is of a sattvic quality, a pure Shakti force or fire, Agni, Sun, Surya, and Moon, Chandra, at its highest level of equilibrium throughout every level of its channel. These three energy configurations are known as the three aspects of Sabda Brahman. Okay, so it's referring to here is the Tritra Nadi, and that is the second innermost layer of Shashumna. As mentioned earlier before, you see that the Shashumna Nadi, uh, uh, particularly the, the Brahma Nadi, but in Shashumna Nadi uh, travels through all of the psychic centers or, or chakras up to starting from the, okay, well, in, in, in discussion, we'll say starting from the base and terminating at the Christ, but it's actually, uh, starts at the Christ as the uh, Shakti energy is pushed down. And once it reaches the base, it goes into a dormant three and a half configuration. But for, for just for discussion for now, you can say that the Shishimna Nadi extends uh, between the base and the Christ, or the Mudahara and the Ajna Chakra, and does not, uh, at least in our uh, level of evolution, uh, does not extend to the crown. Uh, next, we come to the innermost layer of the Shashumna. Uh, it is within the Tritra Nadi, is the Brahma Nadi, where the pure cosmic energy of evolution flows as the power of Kundalini. It is the Kundalini power that travels through the Brahma Nadi, where all major chakra resides. As the Kundalini power passes through this channel, it opens each chakra that resides along this inner path of the Sushumna's Brahma Nadi that brings man from a limited conscious state to an expanded conscious state. So what does that mean, uh, a limited and expanded consciousness? As the soul pushes the Shakti power, is it Shakti or Shiva? No, it's Shakti. Yeah, because Shiva is manifesting. So the Shakti power down the Brahma Nadi, down to Shumna, uh, passing through uh, the various levels of consciousness. The further down it goes, the greater and greater limitation or uh, could say karmic pressure is placed upon the consciousness, limiting its awareness. For the vast majority of uh, humanity on earth, because in our metaphysical and mystic studies and practice, we're focusing on ourselves and developing ourselves. The, what they call the seat of our consciousness or the majority of our consciousness is uh, housed at the sex center, way down here. Actually within the three lower realms, the solar plexus, the sex and the base of the spine or in these lower realms. And you can see that in our environment, in our society, everything that we do has a male-female quality to it. The example that Nehemiah gives us is, for example, 
uh, in order to move energy uh, from one place to another, you have uh, a male plug that an electrical outlet that plugs into a female outlet. And then once that connection is made, energy is able to flow uh, from one source to another to power our devices, our computers, and so on and so forth. So our current uh, seat of our consciousness is at the sex center. But as one moves, their consciousness moves that kundalini energy, because in previous classes, uh, Nima has taught us that the kundalini is the vehicle of consciousness. So as we move that vehicle into higher and higher uh, levels of consciousness, from, this, from the base, to the sex, from the sex, to the solar plexus, solar plexus to the heart, and so on and so forth, we raise our consciousness from a limited state to an ever expanding or further expanding state of consciousness as they move uh, Kundalini up Shashumna. Okay. So let me pause here to give anyone an opportunity to post any questions or comments they may have, or is there anything you wanted to add, Nehemiah? Yeah, one way to look at that is when the soul when the soul is involving itself, bringing about evolution, the soul uh, <clears throat> use shanti power uh, in a state of, of all awareness. If the soul is connected to, to the earth, to the solar system, to the galaxy. So the soul has this, this vast awareness. One of the reasons why it it moves towards evolution is to create basic consciousness. So as the as the soul moves uh, this shati down the Brahmanati, which is protected from all the other layers of Shushuna, it the lower the lower this shati consciousness become, the more configured it becomes. And the and and the the less uh, uh, conductivity that it has in order to translate uh, mind because it becomes more and more gross. So so by the time so by the time the the uh, the shanti power gets to the mulahara chakra or the base of the spine chakra. That's what that that all those pressures pushes the shanti power into a kundalini state of existence, and the kundalini state of existence is a dormant state. That's why you have the egg, and then you have the snake around it, which represents uh, the the power. You know the power to move, but it's frozen. Because the Kundalini is is uh, is 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 a dormant state of power, and in a dormant state of power, uh, you have you have a greater presence of Shiva, which is the uh, absolute. It goes into this solid state. How Shiva is very solid, but it releases a sound. A soundless sound that that is a power, which is the vak. And when you look at the uh, at the petals of of that first chakra, you'll see va sa sa. So it shows that the vak, the initial initial state of equilibrium, is being released into a basic conscious state. And and now and now man uh, is limited uh, <clears throat> in in gross form as embodied consciousness, and, and that's what all this actually the the shears or the swamis was telling us in their Upanishad in in the in, in the uh, different uh, 
Upanishads that this information came from. Mm -hmm. So do we have any questions before I continue on with these handouts? Uh, this is the handout is from a diagram book. This, um, this is, uh, I think it's a combination of both the handouts and a diagram book. I think this one was uh, one I have put together from, I grabbed several diagrams, but it primarily came from, let me see. Were 2012 or 13. This is called the one, the seven, seven chakras and Shashumna diagram. Uh, I have it from 2021, but I, I think it comes from. It's older than that. Yeah. And I think I had combined another one to a couple of pages I pulled from other diagrams. But this might be from the collection of, um, of handouts. Okay, so let me go back to page one because the next one, page four, expands on page one. I'll have to move these around. So this diagram lays out the uh, the, um, the chakra system, as well as illustrates a few or depicts a few layers of the aura or some of the fields of the aura. Uh, but what I wanted to, or what is also included in this diagram are the corresponding realms. So if you look on the far right-hand side, you will see from the mulahara or the base of the spine downward, meaning uh, the, and the, uh, they have the seven lower astral realms. And then from an aspect of here, uh, the solid black line. But from the base of the spine, Mulhara, up to the solar plexus, the three basic and general astral realms. And is here where we presently majority of humanity resides. And then from the heart center upwards and the anahata upwards, you have the higher etheric realms. So you know, in, in, in Buddhist terminology, you have from the solar plexus downward, those are the hells. And from the heart center upward, those are considered the, the heavens, plural heavens and the hells. Now in page three, we go into, sorry, page four. 
we add on top of that the direction of kundalini consciousness. So in, pre in the previous paragraph, we talked about the supra and conscious mind and the levels of mind. At the crown and residing in the higher etheric realms, you have the supra conscious mind and at the Christ and the throat you have primarily representation again the uh, super conscious mind and then as we move from the heart center move, move to the heart center I'm sorry you have uh also presented, but not as prevalent, the super conscious mind, where you have the conscious and the subconscious mind coming in. And as we move lower, you see certain aspects of the of a conscious mind, i.e., the super conscious mind, take uh, more, take less prevalence, uh, and then the conscious mind really takes up dominance as you move from the sex. Uh, and to the base spent centers. And these red lines depict the direction of the Kundalini consciousness. So we have here on the right hand side, you can see again, Shashumna, and then that uh, running through the psychic centers and these red lines represents the direction in which Kundalini consciousness moves. Is that correct, Nimoy? Yeah, it's a negative flow of Kundalini. This is because it, it, uh, it moves into the front of the body when Kundalini should move to the back of the body. Right. In theosophy, they refer to the Kundalini engine moving at the front of the body as the path of glamour. Uh, but when Kundalini moves behind the body of Shashumna, that is the path of evolution or of ascension. Uh, it's actually also spoken about in the Bible when it says, uh, wide and great is the path that leadeth to destruction. That is the Kundalini moving up the channels in the front of the body, but narrow and, and, and wide and grace the path of the destruction, and many thereon walk upon it. But narrow is the path that leads to salvation, and few walk upon it. That narrow path is referring to uh, the Brahman Nadi or moving Kundalini up to Shumna. And so, in many teachings, the science of evolution is taught. So from there we move into the levels of development through states of consciousness. This is actually a big jump. There should be a couple more because we need to have a discussion of what contemplation, concentration, cosmic consciousness is. Let me see if I should save that for later. Yeah, let me save that for later, because I don't think I can just do justice to just a quick glance over it right now. So we'll, at another time, we'll, we'll go into uh, a, a deeper discussion on concentration, contemplation, and meditation. And then we'll revisit this handout.
All right, so again, in this handout, with this page, we look at the realms of existence, the etheric, astral, and physical. And now we add to our illustration of the chakras and psychic centers. So we have you know, the layers of the auric body, a couple, I'm sorry, a couple of auric fields, uh, the primary color to the psychic center, like violet to Ajna, indigo to Vishuddha, uh, green to Anahata, yellow to Manipura, etc. And see how they also call those vibrations uh, correspond to the distribution of the realms and the psychic centers. Next, we have, again, a look at the chakras, the realms, but in particular, we apply this to the movement through those realms in the incarnatory cycle or the path for life beyond death, the chakras and the subtle realms. Let me zoom in a bit. So let's start at the base and the sex center and work our way upwards. Base is part of the Mudahara Chakra, containing 56 tattvic rays, belongs to the Bu Loka or the terrestrial world. And then the sex center of 62 tattvic rays is the Bhuvara Loka or the astral realm. And these two degrees or stages of the sun rays as the Rudra Mahabindu sun rays that is absorbed by the earth and is used to build the physical and subtle realms of existence. And then at the Vishnu Mahabindu level, we have the solar plexus chakra containing 52 tattvic rays. And it is associated with the Swa Loka or the astral subtle world and the heart center with 54 tattvic rays of the Mahara Loka. Also, uh, and it's associated with the etheric realms of the adepts or the masters and, and in that Hand out I had a page I had skipped. That's where we looked at uh, how the realms are divided between the levels of evolution, i.e., masters, adepts, and basic men, and so on. And of those two centers, the heart and solar plexus center, it has the Vishu, sorry, Vishnu, Mahabindu, solar rays that are directly directly hit the, the earth. Then we have at the Brahma Mahabindu rays, the throat chakra, which is 72 tattvic rays, Nana Loka, and the Christ chakra with 64 tattvic rays at the Tapo Loka, both the etheric realms of adepts and masters. And here the Brahma Mahabindu rays are reflected from the moon, and those rays. Those reflected rays from the moon are used to build the mental realms.
each chakra represents a doorway into the physical, mental, and subtle mental and psycho-mental realms of existence. These realms are built from the subtle solar logos material. The tattvic rays represents a string of subtle, vital, and intelligent energy formations that can build worlds of existence. Uh, the column above in the, in the table uh, gives the Sanskrit names for the major realms of Earth, which coincide with the chakras along the spine. The three lower chakras are the astral realms. All right, that's the uh, these three. And the four upper chakras are the mental etheric realms or the higher realms. So at these, at these three low and these four upper realms here. And in this illustration here in the middle, we have an illustration of the uh, reincarnatory cycle. You have reincarnation from the gross mental, physical life experience cycles to a subtle cycle, mental, physical life experience cycles and repeatedly continually. So the gross mental, physical, that's the uh, physical experience on this gross physical realm, which uh, those of us are currently on. And upon the uh, release from the physical body, uh, the aura continues on and, and to the other realms, the subtle realms. And, and there, a subtle cycle, mental, physical life experience cycle is continued until we are incarnate again on this gross physical realm and over and over and over. And so in this chart continues on, or this uh, diagram continues on with that, but goes into more detail, the path for life beyond death. Again, we're looking at the realms of consciousness and how they apply to us. Uh, we are always moving throughout the various realms of consciousness. Uh, whatever either throughout our daily lives or even in between lives, we move from physical, gross physical existence onto the subtle physical existence and then back to gross physical existence. And then I think I'll wrap up after I finish this diagram. And then next time we'll look at the, specifically the realms uh, of masters and the adepts so which is this handout and we'll continue on others all right so let me finish up for today before i cover this chart this, this sorry this illustration do we have any questions or the comments you want to add anymore No, but this is a uh, this is a lot of information. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I was thinking maybe just looking at the seven upper, and then tomorrow. I'm sorry, uh, next time. Uh, so I remember I did this. It took a whole class to do. Yeah, it did. I do. I do remember that. This in itself took a whole class. What's the next slide? After this one. Uh, well, I, I did that, the path for life beyond That's death. The and then the, that one. Yeah. 
but I, I, I'm not sure this is exactly how you had it in the original because I moved. Oh no, this was a whole different class right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's the one after that? This one is the uh, four oh, acid. Mm -hmm. After that one, it goes to the, yeah. All right, so let me just, I'll start with the, let me zoom in a bit so it's easier to see. The chakras, the doorway to all the realms. Each chakra is a vortex center of mental and subtle cosmic energies that possesses a doorway to the mental, psychic, and spiritual realms of Earth. This is evident in our introduction to the physical world through our mother's womb. The sex chakra and the rise of Kundalini through pregnancy builds a vortex center of gross mental and gross physical energetic matter that allows us to enter this physical realm of existence. So we'll look at just the this part here and then we'll conclude for today. So I'll, I'll probably go into next time I'll go into more detail in this diagram as well as the realms of the masters. The seven upper chakras and realms. So first you have the crown chakra or Sahara Sara chakra. That is the highest subtle realm of existence or um, in occult treaties or in our advanced teachings, you'll hear to the uh, realms referred to as levels. And so usually the levels are broken up according to the corresponding uh, uh, chakra or psychic center. Uh, but specifically, you'll hear that in lectures and material produced and released by the Ethereum Society. So those who are members or those who study the Ethereum Society, you'll hear Dr. George King referring to level four, level three, our, 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 uh, our particular operations are performed on level three or level four, what have you. Uh, the Christ Chakra, Ajna Chakra, is the second highest set of subtle realms or the mental planes of the masters. And number five, the throat chakra or the shudra chakra is the third highest set of subtle realms, the mental planes of the masters, level five. Number four, uh, the heart chakra, the anahata chakra, the fourth highest set of subtle realms. It gives meaning to all of the realms below it. That is level four. Then we come to the solar plexus chakra or the Manipura chakra. This is the highest of the basic subtle mental realms. And there is a mixture of souls here, level three. Then you come to the sex center, Svaristana Chakra. The home uh, of most souls, uh, the mental and physical state of at one point of time, that is level two, that the most souls, I mean, that's where the, the most of us reside. 
and the base of the spine, the Mudahara Chakra, uh, the basic mental and physical realm of existence for a human progress, level one. So uh, existence for human progress, uh, what that means is if you look at this illustration, you'll see added to the chakra uh, diagram or illustration, sorry, you have additional centers represented in the legs. These centers in the legs belong to the animal kingdom. And as an intelligence makes its way through evolution, moving through the animal phases, what its crown for the animal kingdom is the base of the spine, Mudahara Chakra. Once its Kundalini reaches the base of the spine, it enters into the human kingdom of the evolutionary cycle, i.e. the basic mental and physical realm of existence for a human progress. So the human level of, uh, of conscious expression begins at the base of the spine, and then as Kundalini continues its journey up Shashumna through the soul, sex, solar plexus, and heart, uh, gains higher and higher expressions of consciousness, i.e., uh, examples mentioned here, the third or the, or the fifth and sixth levels, the realms of the masters, once you raise Kundalini up to the throat, heart, throat, and cry center, you are in the realms of the adepts and the masters, which we'll look at uh, in a subsequent open discussion. Is there anything you wanted to add? Anymore? No. All right, do we have any final questions or comments before we close out today's session? Right. Well, if there are no further questions, then let's conclude today's open discussion by reciting the New Lord's Prayer. By the way, the prayers that we use in, our, in these classes at the opening and closing of uh, not just the open discussion sessions, but our lecture series as well. These prayers, the collection of prayers are available uh, uh, through the Aetherius Society. So if you'd like to pick up these prayers uh, you can go to the Aetherius website, aetherius.org, A-T-H-E-R-I-U-S, Aetherius, oh, by the way, aetherius.org. And there's a little booklet called A Collection of Prayers, a little book of prayer collection of prayers that's available. And you may even be able to download some of the prayers. I think you can go to uh, 12 Blessings, that's 12, the number one, two, blessings.org and I do believe uh, you can download a set of the prayers that we use in a 12 blessings prayer service as well as some of the other prayers as well including uh, prayer for spiritual workers and the new lord's prayer
the new Lord's Prayer. O divine and wondrous spirit, O everlasting Lord of hosts, send forth now through me thy great and lasting power. Allow me, O mighty God, the lasting privilege of radiating to all the world thy great love, so that those who suffer may be given the power and energy to rise above their weaknesses. Almighty God, in great humility do I ask you to send forth your power to give to me this great lasting privilege of being a channel so that my suffering brothers may be helped and guided and healed and lift it into thy light, so that they who know not may look up, and in doing so, receive to their higher selves your divine counsel. Almighty God, this day have you granted me a divine privilege. I ask you now to give to me the strength, so that Never again will I turn from my inner vision of you. Oh, great peace, great peace, great peace. In praise of your greatness, O God, doth my soul sing. Granted energy to sing on forever and forever. All right, thank you very much, everyone, for your kind attendance and participation. Do hop into that shared uh, Google Drive folder and access those handouts, which we make available to everyone for free. You can download them, study them, uh, uh, prepare any questions or comments you have. Uh, and also do let me know if there are any spelling or grammatical errors on them, and, and I'll go back and, and fix those. Um, also, do visit our website, mysticknowledge.org, for many, many more resources, books, and materials that you can use to also help you in your study and practice. Thanks again for coming, and we'll see you next time. Have a wonderful week.